the building of the Lord of Living Stones. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a blessing to have uh, not only the new facilities that we're doing, uh, but the ones that we do have that we can just minister. And isn't it so much needed in our country today to be able to just minister the gospel when there are so many other godless philosophies being promoted, and especially towards the young people as well. So we count that a great privilege and honor uh, to do that. Uh, there are basically two projects. Uh, the, we had originally planned the service a little earlier, but that doesn't matter. So the one of a year is, um, I don't know what to call it, but it's, uh, uh, you know, because we do all sorts of things over there. It's a youth center, a uh, stroke uh, a ministry center, stroke uh, educational center, and also a mission house for visiting, or even a manse for down the line that may be used for that. So it's a multi-purpose, multi-functional ministry center, and I think that we can describe it. And then at the back over there, which we haven't started, so this one is going up actually quite quickly, and there's a good fellowship area there and recreational area as well. And then at the back, that side, and later on if you go into the garden, that's not started yet, but that's going to be an extension of, of the classrooms outside over there. And so we have a, I think it's a good problem in a way, um, on the school side, we don't have enough space. Uh, on the church side, we normally have got a lot of empty seats. So, but nevertheless, we have many different things. And uh, so, But we praise the Lord that we can expand and just accommodate um, um, the, the children as well of our community in that uh, regard. Uh, Frederick Douglass said, It is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. It is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And we know that the Word of God, both Old and New Testament, places much, much emphasis on training our children and our young people in the ways of the Lord. And when they were old, they were not depart uh, there of. And so Rock of Christ Ministries, that's one of our main focus areas uh, as well with our normal other anointed ministry as well. So that is a blessing. Uh, of the Lord, and we give thanks to the Lord for that. Uh, just one or two notices. Um, I think everything else is on, yeah, if you've got a program, um, that just will give you a bit of an overview. Um, and then if you want to know more, if you haven't got one of these, I don't think as many strangers here, because in one way or another, whether it's parents or teachers or whatever, we all are here at certain times. So do get yourself one of those. Uh, that's our latest bulletin over there. Uh, just notices, um, restrooms you can go through there. There is down that way as well, but the students' restrooms are there, but uh, you're welcome just to go through there along the back there, and then we find some restrooms. There is also a mother's room uh, for your convenience if you just go out and to your right as you walk out, and there is sound uh, and everything in there as well, so you're welcome to uh, use that as well if you need to, um, and you can watch the service uh, through there also. Um, just cell phones, we just ask that you keep them on silent if you don't mind. Um, I'm not going to tell you it's a no smoking area, I trust that there is no smokers. <laughs> but, uh, but other than that, um, I've said if you want the latest bulletin you can get that too. Uh, but at this stage I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Henry Nube, our friend and uh, fellow minister as well, and if you'd come and open up in prayer for us. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor John. Are we all blessed this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm so privileged that, uh, to be here this morning. And I thank you, Pastor John, for extending your special invitation to us that we can become part of this big occasion that God has ordained for this church, Rock of Christ. We are here to glorify God. We are here to give him all the glory and honor and God is an amazing God. God does things that are beyond our human understanding and uh, what we cannot comprehend. A special greetings to uh, Dr. Supramani and all the men of God that are here, present here this morning. We are here to glorify God. And I, I'm, th I'm so humble that, uh, I, that with all humility to be part of this big blessing that the Lord has done for this church. There's a scripture before I pray that I will 
like to <clears throat> first time seeing Pastor Dembe <laughs> as well. It's it's a blessing, man of God. Um, concerning the, the the temple that God uh, assigned Solomon to build in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse number twelve, it says. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer. This is the time when he had completed the building. The building had come to completion. God came to confirm concerning the temple that was built by Solomon. And I have heard your prayer and I've chosen this place. It's another thing when we choose the place. It's another thing when God chooses the place. I've chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we want to give our thanks to you. We will serve no foreign gods because you are the true God. You are the living God. We thank you, Father God, for Rock of Christ that this has not been initiated by man but you have spoken to your servant to build these sanctuary places. This sanctuary place. We thank you, Father God, that we are here as witnesses to witness your goodness, to witness your faithfulness. We thank you, Father God, that this dream that we have put into your servant's heart, it has materialized. Now we are here, we are see, seeing, we are witnesses of what you have given to the men of God. Pastor John, I pray, Father God, that on this day we leave this place with a testimony of how good God is. We thank you that we serve the living God. We are the God who never fails. We are the God who performs miracles. We are the God of wonders. We want to give you praise, glory, and honor. We commit to the continuation of the service. The word that is going to come forth. Everything that will be said and done. May you be glorified. Anoint your servant. Whom you are going to use this morning. As your mouthpiece. We want to hear your voice. Our hearts are open. Our hearts are good recipients. To hear what God is going to speak into our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come against any spirit of distraction, any spirit that can sidetrack our minds. We come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we're here to receive what you have ordained for us this morning. May you be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's give Jesus a round of applause in the house of the Lord. He is worthy of all praises. He is worthy of all honor. We want to give him all the praise and glory and honor. May you be blessed. Thank you, men of God. Amen. Well, I'm going to hand over to uh, Jocelyn and the worship team, and they're going to lead us further as we go into a time of praise and worship. Are you ready to praise? Are you excited to be here this morning? Amen. We're excited to see you all as well. Praise the Lord.
the goodness of God. Creation. 
Let's just tell him he's worthy this morning. Father, we exalt you. You're worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. We magnify your name. We lift up your name today. Thank you, Lord, that you've come for us, that you died in our place. And because you are worthy, that you've made us worthy to stand before you in righteousness. We exalt you and we give you praise today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We magnify your name. Spirit of God, have your own way amongst us. We look to you and we exalt you. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you, Father. We exalt your name. King of kings, Lord of lords, we lift up your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you're moving even now, that you're touching lives, that you're touching hearts. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We exalt you. We worship you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Worship you. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. You may take your seats. Thank you to Jocelyn and the worship team once again. and Give them a hand of appreciation as well. And they really sang and just created such a wonderful condition for worship this morning and prepared our hearts for the word. And uh, to ask Pastor Subramani, I want to welcome you forward here this morning. And uh, if you come and join us up front here, Pastor, we thank you. Good morning, church. Want to greet you in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord on a Lord's day. Amen. And you will agree with me, the best place for any one of us to be is in the will of the Lord. Amen. And in being in the will of the Lord, we have to be within the dictates of the word of God which tells us we must not forsake the assembling together of the saints of God. Amen. And I'm glad that in obedience, you have come this morning, came, both to celebrate with the Rock of Christ Church and its uh, projects, and also the time to have a time of fellowship. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John Ellis, for the invitation. Uh, accorded to me to be a part of your program today and on behalf of the North Coast Regional Council we want to congratulate you and the assembly on this great initiative. Amen. Amen. Pastor John is an esteemed colleague that serves with, with us on the management committee of the North Coast Regional Council the North Coast Regional Council uh, extends from beyond the Amgeni River. Okay, if you know where the Amgeni River is. Right, they diverted it so you not, won't find it too easy. Okay, um, right up to the border of Swaziland. Okay, uh, quite a large region. And Pastor Ellis serves faithfully on the management. Uh, is also a clear thinker, a man of principle, and a man of wisdom. So thank you, sir, for all your contribution in the region. And we are so excited of um, the developments in this place. Okay. Um, we did have turbulence in the past. Okay, but after your coming, your placement in this area, we've seen growth and development. You may not have a large assembly like you said it. I'm not saying it. You said this at the uh, onset. You may not have a large assembly, but I want to know uh, this church has a special ministry for two children. The very fact that, that this is a Christian school, that it's the basis, the, the constitution of this uh, Organization is the word of God. Amen. And since it's a word of God, okay, you are building for tomorrow. Okay. 
You may not have the adults in here, but you got all the children, future leaders of our community, our country, and the kingdom of God. You are developing them, laying the foundation, which is a very, very great task. And we are so excited for the vision that God has given to you for extension. Uh, at this time in our country, with uh, an economy that cannot be predicted, many people are tight on their purse. And they are not uh, getting involved in much initiatives. But we are glad that even in times like this, you, have, you heard God. Amen. If you hear God, you can never go wrong. Okay. If you hear the economist, okay, they can go wrong because they say you something today and they say you something tomorrow and then they will find someone to blame for what was said. Okay. But the God, word of God is forever established in the heavens above. Okay. Everything will change, but not the word of God. Amen. Having said that, God always gives a vision to an individual. Never to an organization or a group of people. God always finds a man. But he wants something done, he finds a man. We find this as a strong principle in the word of God. Okay, From the beginning of time, when God was dealing with the children of Israel, okay, they had many things that they had to deal with. But God always spoke to Moses and said, go and speak to my people and tell them I said this. Now God is God. He has power. He is everywhere at the same time. Okay, he is omnipresent. He is all powerful. He is, he is omnipotent. He could have thundered from the heavens and told the children of Israel, thus, thus, thus. But he did not do that because God works according to heavenly protocol. Amen. He always finds a man. In the book of Nehemiah, okay, in the book of Nehemiah, we read in chapter 3 and verse number 6. Sorry, chapter 4 and verse number 6. It says, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined to joined together to half of its height, for the people had a mind to work. Amen. Now, in the case of Nehemiah, the gates of Jerusalem was burned down. There was destruction in Jerusalem. And God wanted his house, his treasured place, Jerusalem, to be restored, to be built up. Okay? Now, God in every situation chooses a man. Here at Rock of Christ, in this season, Pastor John Ellis had been chosen to be the leader that will give direction and leadership to this building program. Okay? Now, why was Nehemiah chosen? Okay, why was in this particular case Nehemiah was chosen? Okay? There must be some qualification in order to be involved in any project that God has. Like in the secular, okay, you can't just pitch up tomorrow and stand at any of the establishment and expect to apply for a job at the gates and to get it. No. Okay. You know there's a process involved. You have to submit your CV and they will check you out to see whether you meet the requirements. And if you do, you'll be shortlisted, interviewed and so forth. Okay. But God does not work that way. Okay. He don't shortlist and, and call you for interview. He knows the person that he calls. Obviously, there must be the qualification that he sees in you in order to call you to the task. Let's look at Nehemiah. What was his qualification? Why was he chosen for this task of raising up Jerusalem, the walls that have been destroyed, 
to get involved in this building program firstly we find that nehemiah was a man of faith okay god looks for people that have faith faith is not based upon what you see faith is based upon what you don't see in the natural but you see in the spiritual that is faith amen, amen. so god always look for people of faith in in any building program today we talking about a physical building program okay the pastor emphasize that this goes far beyond a physical building we are looking ahead we are looking ahead when when the ministry center will be put out we don't know okay uh, how it's going to work but we know that god already have it worked out we don't know what ministries will be um, exercise from this place but god always know what he is doing now this is not pastor john and jocelyn ellis building they are building for the future amen eternity only will reveal to you when you appear before the throne of god and before the uh, bema judgment of god what this building has meant okay long after we are gone okay in the succession when 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 others will take over where you are today and the school will continue to to uh, function as long as the lord prevails okay if he comes sooner than that everything comes to an end okay so eternity only will reveal the impact that this building we're going to dedicate today or the or the project that we're going to dedicate today what it will mean for the kingdom of god and the impact it will have okay so it requires a man of faith okay so pastor john had seen this in the spirit eye and have already planned for tomorrow amen that's a man of faith a man of sight prepares for the present time what he can see okay and but a man of faith look beyond what he can see and sees with the spiritual eyes because god speak to men of god who wait upon him through revelation knowledge revelation knowledge is something which has not been revealed to you yet whatever is known to you and revealed to you is no longer revelation revelation is something that you have not seen okay but god shows it to you amen um i'll be excited to see the finished product okay uh, when it's all done right so the finished product is not a revelation yet to us we have not seen it okay but when it's done it's a revelation then we know god this is what pastor john ellis okay and jocelyn and all those that work with them in the committee saw in the spirit eyes amen secondly nehemiah was chosen because he was a man of courage okay now remember he took on a task in the face of enemies the enemies of israel didn't want jerusalem being raised up again the walls of the city being raised up against okay they were not happy about it okay now in the midst of this we find nehemiah taking on the task it's very interesting to see how he starts off we spoke about the man of faith now we talk about the man of courage okay when he heard that his brethren were in trouble when he heard that the gates had been and uh, the walls of the city had been destroyed the bible says that he went and sought god first okay he did not do anything else he sought god in times of fasting and prayer okay so our first point of departure must be 
knowing the mind of God and the will of God. Okay, which ties up with the man of faith. The man of faith will know the will of God and the timing. Okay, because we go through, in our lives and ministries, there are many seasons. Okay, and all seasons don't happen at the same time. We need to know the timing of God and the seasons of God in our life. Okay, he sought God first. And look at his courage. I said he did this in the face of his enemies. But even before he confronted his enemy, he went to the king. Okay. He was the cupbearer. Okay. The cupbearer is someone that tastes from the cup first before they give it to the king. So if he's taking a cup of wine... Okay, now I'm, I'm not advocating that you do this. I'm only telling you what's, what's recorded. Okay, if he takes the wine to the king, he must first taste it before he give it to the king. Now you ask why? Simply that the king will know that he's not poisoned. Okay, so that's a cup bearer. Now he, as a cup bearer, he comes before the king. And I guess you know by now, nobody can go in the presence of the king unless they are invited. Okay? Not even the queen can go there unless she's invited. Right? Yeah, the cup bearer, okay, since he's the cup bearer, it's his duty, so he was allowed. But the Bible says that the day that he, Nehemiah went in, he had a very, very sad countenance. And the king asked him, now look, is there something wrong? Are you sick? Uh, I, uh, your countenance is sad. And then he had the opportunity. Okay, he had the opportunity. Just like how Esther had the opportunity to speak to the king, he had the opportun opportunity and said, King, how can my countenance be glad okay, when my people are suffering? When the walls are down. Okay, and the king said, now, what's the request? Okay, what's the request? What, what you really want done? And he said, now to the king, if you could help, O king. First he said, O king, live forever. What a lie that is. Which king can live forever? Only our king, the king of king, he lives forever. Okay, that's by the way. He said, now king. If you can give me an official letter, okay, a, uh, they, the letter, they, could, they used to call it a writ, W-R-I-T. If you can give me a royal writ, royal writ means it comes from no one else but the king. If you can give me a royal writ that will allow me to go through the various border posts of the other um, countries or provinces or so that I can get to Jerusalem. Okay, listen carefully. What did he ask for? A royal writ. Pastor John, you have the royal writ for your project. So nothing going to stop you. You don't need the permission of anybody else. You got the royal writ that gives you permission to go ahead and reach your destination in your project. Amen. So, a man of courage, in that he had the courage to confront the king with a need. Amen. And then we see it follows up, he takes up this project in the face of his enemies, which means a courageous man that's ready to do what God has laid upon his heart. We already mentioned prayer, a man of prayer. Okay, in other words, this entire uh, project was bathed and clothed in prayer. The fourth thing we find about Nehemiah, he was a man of action. Amen. Man of action. Listen, in any vision that God gives to you, any project that God gives to you, okay, he expect that to become alive. Amen. We must not be too academic in what we do. 
we must be practical also amen we must be practical there must be action okay as i drove in i saw some action already i was not too sure what what i'm going to see and what i'm coming to do or uh, uh, rather uh, coming to view okay i know that the, 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 the i knew about the building program i knew what the project that the man of god had but i don't know what i'm going to see but i walked in as a house there's action already amen so which means we're not just talking about something just futuristic okay it has already begun amen a man of action okay pastor john let me just throw some things into your court concerning this program i must speak about the project i must speak about what is current on the agenda for today okay the bible says that nehemiah's task was not a easy one and may i encourage you in this program it's not going to be easy like drawing a plan is any art architect here they will tell you drawing a plan is too, not too difficult if you have the knowledge of how to do it okay but the architect will draw a plan f- for you sitting in his air conditioned office but the action is on the ground amen the action the architect is not going to come and dig up the trenches for you okay or, or mix up the concrete for you right it's going to be those challenges nehemiah add the challenges okay that everyone that annals a godly project will come across okay it'll be um challenges that will even frustrate you challenges that will tempt you to give it up and it to somebody else okay now listen to somebody who has some practical knowledge so i can speak from a point of uh experience okay i i i have built three times uh, and i know what it is to be frustrated in the midst of a building program okay there were times when you need um building material to go on and you don't have the money okay i've gone through where i went ahead and ordered the building material without having the money okay now i look back and say hey you are quite a brave guy <laughs> right <laughs> order the material w- without the money okay but god is faithful i always preach and i always say to people if god want you to do anything he will pay for it and you want to do anything you pay for it yourself okay so if 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 it's of god if god called you to do something he is going to supply that need okay we see this in nehemiah okay we see this in nehemiah i'll touch on it just now but he had his problem because he had oppositions okay he had opposition bible says there was tobiah there was a uh, send ballot they led a rebellion against nehemiah and his builders okay um they spread a rumor that there's going to be an attack on all the workers and now the workers stood back and said now oh nehemiah we can't continue with the building program we believe there's going to be an attack okay but nehemiah said hold on i want you to know we have a god that's great and powerful amen we have a god that's great and powerful you focus on this god okay don't focus on what you hear focus on what you've been asked to do and he said i'm going to give you the practical way to handle this i want you to take your sword and put it at your side okay with the other hand i want you to take the trowel he says with the trowel you continue building and if the enemy comes 
you got the sword to defend yourself. Amen. Come on. I'm not advocating that you leave the service and go and buy yourself a sword. There is the sword of, of the word of God. Can I hear somebody say amen? Come on. This is the sword of the spirit to ward off any attacks that comes in your life and against your ministry. Amen. And at the same time, you can build and continue building. Amen. Um, what happened? What happened? I, I, I'm cutting this. This Nehemiah uh, episode is a long one. And I don't think we have all the time for that today. But let me just get some snippets out of it. What happened? There was Sanballat, Tobiah standing there, criticizing a project that a man of God was leading, that God has given him. Okay, what happened? They continued criticizing, ridiculing, and so forth. But they kept building. They kept the eyes on the project. What happened? The walls came up. Okay, where was the critic that was behind the wall? Are you getting it? No longer in sight. When the builders were building, they didn't see the people behind the wall anymore, but they saw the, the wall rising. Pastor John, in spite of what may come your way in this building program, you will have some kinds of challenges. Okay? You will have some kinds of challenges. There will be some people that will say you that you're doing the wrong thing at the wrong time or you shouldn't have done this, you should have done that, or the planning was not right. You will get something. If, not all, it, if it's not all of what I'm mentioning, it will be even something that I'm not mentioning will come your way. But keep your eyes on your project. Give leadership to those, the band of people that are with you in this program and the walls will come up. When the walls come up, we will not see the critics anymore. They are behind the wall. The wall will come up. And the Bible says that the wall was complete because the people had a mind to work. Amen. So you are doing a great job. You are doing an excellent job. Keep your eyes upon the Lord and you will have great success. No matter what challenges come, you will, at the end of the day, or the end of your assignment, you'll be able to put your head up high and say, thank you, Lord. Through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in his word. Amen. So we wish you well and pray that as the days progress and as the um, project continues that we will soon and very soon uh, uh, be invited. I'm inviting myself. I don't know if it's the right thing to do. <laughs> okay. To be, to be here to see to the official opening of your project. Amen. Would you bow with me? Are we going to do the uh, dedication on the outside? Or are we doing it here? Do it from here. Okay. Want you all to stand. Want you to join someone's hand next to you. Make sure that that person that you're joining is a man or a woman of faith. Now you're going to do it, I don't know. <laughs> right. Okay. I want you to raise those hands up. Let's be a part. Let's be a part of this. Okay, you leave the service and go home and say, I dedicated that building program. <laughs> right, so we're all doing it together. Let's trust God. God is faithful and he is faithful to his word. Amen. Let's pray. Father, it is with great joy that we approach the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. We thank you that this is only possible because of your matchless love for us. Oh God, when you send Jesus Christ to die upon the cross for us and pay for our salvation, which we enjoy so full, so rich, and so free. And we thank you through the death 
of Jesus Christ on the cross, we have access to your mighty throne. And we come to your throne today to know that the throne is occupied by our great God, our great Jehovah, who has all power in heaven and in earth, and who is more than sufficient in every situation, and one who handles all things which are impossible and convert it into being possible. Today, Lord, we come to this, your sanctuary, the Rock of Christ ministry. We join in with Pastor John Ellis and Joycelyn Ellis and the church council and the um, workforce that are involved in this building program. We join in with them and we bring before your throne, O oh God, this building program. Thank you, Lord, that you know the end from the beginning. We are just looking at the beginning, but you know the end from the beginning. Thank you that this picture is already on your radar. And Lord, by faith, we make a declaration over this project, O oh God. And pray that you're going to, Lord, supply every need. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Every finance that will be needed, O oh God, you will provide supernatural. Father, we pray even for the workmen, O oh God, whoever will be involved in this program. Lord, you would give us the right people, O oh God, with the, with the right skill and Lord, with the right attitude to be involved in this program. Like you spoke to Moses and said, let me choose the workmen. Let me tell you who the workmen must be involved in the building of the tabernacle. Oh God, in similar way, choose for us the right people, oh God, that will come and add value to this building. Father, I pray that you're going to, Lord, undertake for the ministry that will be exercised on this premises, O oh God. Lord, I pray that you're going to, Lord, cause everything to fall in place. We are, Lord, rejoicing and thanking you for lives that are going to be blessed. In the extension to the school, all those additional children that will come in, O oh God, will be blessed will be nurtured upon the most holy faith. The foundation in their life will be laid, O oh God, so that no man could lay any other foundation. And I pray that they will, Lord, be products for heaven. We claim them, Lord, to be uh, the products that will enter the heavenlies. They will not be lost to this world or the systems of this world. But, Lord, that they will be protected both day and night with the blood of the Lamb. They'll be led by your Spirit. They'll be nurtured by your Word. And we pray, O oh God, over the entire school, even the present staff. We pray over the present staff that wisdom will be given to them, knowledge will be given to them. Lord, you will minister to them, O oh God, through the curriculum that they will, Lord, uh, use. I pray that you would, Lord, give them the wisdom and the knowledge even to build these children up, O oh God, upon the most holy faith. We pray for every child that is in the school and every child that will enter the school year after. Oh God, when they enter these grounds, something will happen in their life, oh God. There will be a dispatching of angelic beings, oh God, that will take care of the children. Let Lord guardian angels which you have for each child protect each child upon these grounds, oh God. Father, I pray for the ministry center. Whatever will be exercised and operated on in this ministry center will bring honor and glory to your name. I pray, Lord, that every counseling that will take 
place there. Lord, broken marriages will be put together. Oh God, oh God, where are there going to be? People in the community, Lord, with addiction. Oh God, they'll be set free by the power of God. Whatever happens in the place will be saturated by the power of the Holy Ghost. And the administrator of that ministry center will be none other than the blessed Holy Spirit who knows all things, who is our guide and our teacher. Lord, we pray success. We pray success over the ministry that will be exercised, O oh God. Whatever future ministry will be exercised in the years that lie ahead, O oh God, will be governed and directed by you. And now as a family, as our ends are linked together, we raise it up to you and we dedicate this ministry center and the extension of the school to your, for your honor and for your glory in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Okay, now when you go home and uh, people ask you where you come from, I say, hey, today I went to dedicate a ministry center. Amen. Okay, you've been a part of it. Come on, won't you give the Lord a good hand? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. Once again, well done. Uh, you are in our prayers. The region holds you up in prayer. And we are glad that the region is active and there's some action in this part of the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, uh, Pastor Sam, for much wisdom and encouragement today. And I trust that you encouraged uh, this morning uh, by those words. And we just give God glory and we give him praise. And let's just give a praise offering again to the Lord uh, this morning. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Janine and uh, Dylan, Dees, uh, are you here somewhere? Yeah, if you could just come help with the offering, yeah? And... Uh, Pastor mentioned something very important. It's not my building. It's not our buildings. It's the Lord's buildings. And um, it's going to carry on in succession. So uh, we want to invite you also to give and uh, into the legacy that we know that God is going to uh, succeed. And, and we trust that uh, for many years until Jesus comes even. So we want to invite you to do that. Uh, but I also want to just invite Pastor Philip Tembe uh, to come and pray and uh, over the offering. Now, I'm sure, Pastor Philip, you were blessed by the word today as well, because they have also begun a building project uh, in Anguilla Zon. They're building a new church here. Uh, so I'm sure, Sister Pepe and Pastor, you were encouraged as well by the word, which is very relevant for you. And we just trust that God will bless you uh, in your endeavors uh, there uh, also, in fact, I rode past there the other day, and I saw something uh, coming on the land there. So praise the Lord for that. We can see you're a man of action, and, and we bless your assembly to that. But come up and just uh, pray for us as well. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Greeting, Pastor, and all the leaders of the church, all the pastors. I now missed a student and uh, uh, the visitors. Uh, my name is Philip, as has been, Pastor has said. It's a great honor for me to be here in this morning. I've been encouraged also, as Pastor John is saying, I've been encouraged while uh, we're speaking about uh, what we're dedicating the building as we are also building, we're about to start a project back there in Golizane. Uh, but I don't, I don't, want, I don't, I don't want to waste your time before we take offering. Let us get the scripture reading from the book of Second uh, uh, Corinthians, chapter 8, verse number 1. I will begin from verse number one, where it reads as follows. For now, I, for now, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches of Macedonia. They are being, they are being tested and by, and they are being tested by many troubles, by many troubles, and they are very poor, but they are also filled with abundant joy which has overflowed in rich, in rich, in rich gen gen generosity. For I can, testify, I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more 
and they did it they did it of their own free will they begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in for for the for, for the for the i mean for the privilege of sharing in the gift for believers in Jerusalem ladies and gentlemen before we bring offering and uh, I want to share this scripture as we, as, as I mean, as we are reading now. Here, Paul is encouraging the Corinthian church about 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 giving about about giving for the church in Jerusalem that was going through tough times. Now, while he is in while he is encouraging the church, he is using the Macedonian churches. He says. Uh, the the churches, I mean the believers from Macedonia, they gave although they were they, although they were in although they were going through tough times, although they were poor, but they gave. I like that one that says, although they were poor, but they gave. And what I want to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, today is that poverty is not an excuse for not giving. Because these people were very poor and they were going through a, t- um, a, a tough times, but they were begging Paul to give them an, op- an opportunity to give. If we remember very well, Paul was not always uh, encouraging the churches from Macedonia to give because he knew their situation. But it themselves who begged Paul and said, Paul, please give us an opportunity we want to give. And the Bible says they gave beyond what, what was expected by, by, by the apostle. What I want to say to the gentlemen, you must give beyond your situation. Don't allow your situation to determine how do you give. But you must allow the word of God to determine, uh, but, but must allow the word of God to determine how you give. As I was contemplating about this scripture, I have learned. Say, I, I mean, I have learned something. I have learned. I mean, I have. I have learned few things. Number one, I have learned that uh, whatever we have in our disposary does not belong to us. Ladies and gentlemen, you must know that everything in your hands does not belong to you. That will be a motivational factor for you to give. Number two, you must know that uh, when you die, when, when we die, we'll never take anything from what we have. We'll never take anything from what we have. I once attended the funerals of rich people. I have never seen anyone being buried with his millions in the coffin, meaning that everything we, well, everything we, we have found it here, everything we will leave it here. Therefore, we have to use it for the kingdom of God. Lastly, I want to, uh, I mean, I want to challenge you by this. Uh, we will never be remembered by what we have received, but we will be remembered by what we have given. People who will remember us on earth are those whom we have given them something, are not those, and, 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 and not those who, I mean, and I mean, and not those whom we have receiving, we have received something from them. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stand on our feet and be ready to give. But you must pay, but but, but let it pay, must be in mind that whatever you have does not belong to you. You will never take it to heaven. You have it to give. Let us stand on our feet. Let us close our eyes and begin to pray. Our heavenly Father, now we are about to give. We thank you, Father, for encouraging us in this morning to know that we don't own anything. Thank you so much for encouraging us, Father, that poverty is not an excuse for not giving. Father, we believe that everything in our hands, you have given it to us to bless somebody with us. Now, Lord, we want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to partake in this ministry of giving. We pray, our Heavenly Father, to may bless us as we are giving. We pray in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Timber. Well, at this point, we're going to um, close in a song, and then just one or two things about what happens next. And then we uh, will disperse. Um, we're going to go out through that door. It's